Mark P. Otten back with you. All right, this is your introduction to ANCOVA, analysis of covariance, uh, which basically means you're doing ANOVAs with a covariate, so like a second independent variable that comes in and is treated uniquely, uh, but there's a lot of overlap to multiple regression here. So if you've done a multiple regression already, then yeah, the math is kind of similar, actually the same in a lot of cases. So. Uh, let's, uh, so this video is going to be a quick introduction in general to ANCOVA and then a um, independent samples ANCOVA example with one uh, independent variable and one covariate. So this is the example that we're going to use. It is silly. It is not real data, uh, but this is <laughs> two types of therapy, uh, talking with mom and, ta and eating chocolate, not talking to the chocolate. I started to say talking to the chocolate. Well, that'd be different too. Uh, all right, so um, the one independent variable is therapy type with two levels. Uh, four different people uh, did the first one and then four different people did the second one. So it's independent groups. Dependent uh, variable is satisfaction rating uh, in terms of the therapy. So uh, person number three in the mom group really enjoys talking to their mother. All right, so. Uh, we've got um, uh, an ANOVA that we can do first, uh, followed by an ANCOVA. So here's the setup for the ANOVA. I'm just going to fly through this. This is your sum of squares between sum of squares within. Typical stuff for independent samples um, and a one-way ANOVA. Um, so um, again, refer back to the, the one-way ANOVA video for, for details. We end up with an F value of 0 0.09, which is very small. Uh, we're not seeing a difference here between uh, <laughs> uh, therapy types. We're not rejecting the null hypothesis and so on. Now, if we add in a covariate, now there's a couple different sequences here. You could do what, we're, what I'm showing you is an ANOVA followed by an ANCOVA. So you add in the covariate as like a step, like you do the ANOVA first and then you do the ANCOVA second. You could do it all just as an ANCOVA from the beginning um, it just depends. It depends on your, on your theory. It depends on your hypothesis. So just try to follow your hypothesis as closely as you can. Uh, sometimes you might think, hey, I need, to, I need to put this covariate in there. The theory in a covariate is that there's something else. There's some other independent variable that's out there that's affecting or influencing or changing our, um, our effect of our original independent variable. And it's doing so as a, as a bystander, like a it's not necessarily interacting the way it would as a, in a two-way ANOVA case. It's doing it as a uh, something that we want to. We, we don't necessarily want to focus on this uh, particular covariate as a like an independent effect. We want to just focus on it in how it's affecting the original uh, independent variable. So we use this this uh, term controlling for uh, when, when it comes to ANCOVA. Um, and so in this case, it would be, is there a, a difference in rating between the two types of therapy controlling for eliminating or um, uh, regardless of the effects of uh, the covariate, in this case, the intelligence of the raters. Oh my gosh, this example is getting sillier as we go along. If the answer is yes, then there's a different, well, we already know there's no difference <laughs> in this case, but if there was, uh, then we could say, yes, there is still a difference now, even when we run the ANCOVA, People enjoy talking to their mom more than they enjoy eating chocolate, regardless of how intelligent they are. Something like that would be the conclusion. I mentioned this controlling for terminology. No matter what kind of answer, so that we could have dependent samples uh, here instead of independent samples. We could have more than one independent variable. We could have a two-way ANOVA that turns into a two-way ANCOVA. You'll see that in a separate video here that I'm about to film uh, after this. In each scenario, you you could have a covariate, and so when you do that, typically the typical terminology, like I mentioned, is controlling for it. So we we would state the ANOVA hypothesis. We would state the state it the same way as we would for an ANOVA, and then you could add just at the end while controlling for the covariate or whatever the covariate is, um, whatever the variable is in your data set. Okay, so in this case, I added in this uh, IQ variable. I don't even believe in IQ being important anymore or ever really was. But anyway, <laughs> here it is in a silly example, uh, adding in a, a, each um, person in our data set uh, underwent one of the two therapy types and then uh, gave an, a, an IQ, uh, took an IQ test and <laughs> gave a score there. All right, so what does this look like as an ANCOVA? 
Well, everything's the same uh, on the surface, but um, you've got these apostrophes. This is, um, so you see MS be between with an apostrophe, a little, um, a little uh, uh, what is that? A line next to the S for MS, line next to the second S in uh, sum of squares. So everything is, is um, modified. Uh, it's uh, now accounting for the variance in the covariate in addition to the variance in the independent variable as in ANOVA. Uh, so it modified, adjusted, every, the, the apostrophe is standing for an adjustment here in the math, in the, the um, calculation of these um, statistics for ANCOVA. So how do we do this? What do, well, first of all, I'm not asking if, if you're uh, worried about your homework. I'm not asking you to make these adjustments uh, for your homework. I'm asking you to run things in SPSS and or R, get your results and um, interpret from there. So don't worry about it. Uh, so you can skip this part of the video <laughs> if you want. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm showing you there's about three pages in the uh, book Experimental Design Using ANOVA from Tabachnik and Fidel. This, uh, these pages outline the math uh, involved in modifying your um, statistics. So if you're curious, you can uh, zoom into these slides, uh, zoom into this video um, and check it out. You can also go and, and find the book uh, if you haven't already. This first page here is how you adjust the degrees of freedom. Then they go into a, an example that's similar to ours in terms of um, uh, smallness. It's a small sample example of um, independent, uh, uh, independent samples, a one-way independent samples and COVA, like the one we're doing here, or we're about to do in SPSS. So it's showing you uh, the sum of squares adjustments here. Sum of squares calculations followed by more sum of squares calculations followed by mean square <laughs> calculations followed by um, uh, the result here, which gives you uh, gives them an f of fifteen point four four. So if you're follow if you if you want to, like I said, pause here, look into it more. If you're curious, if you're uncomfortable just going to SPSS and getting results here, um, then spend some more time. If you're comfortable skipping by, then let's skip by. <laughs> All right, the other thing we need to do um, is just screen for multicollinearity. If you saw this in the, if you remember this from the multiple regression lesson, it's the same thing. Uh, you just need to make sure that your covariate and your independent variable are not too highly correlated. Typically greater than 0 0.90 is a, um, it, it uh, will knock you out automatically of doing this. You need to make sure that it's less than 0 0.90, this correlation. Um, and here we have something very high, 0 0.80. <laughs> so we're gonna proceed. In real life, if you have a correlation that's high like this, but not quite uh, 0 0.90, eh, it's a red flag, but you can still proceed. Um, so let's proceed. Okay, so here's your SPSS data. Uh, this is the, the same data I just showed you in the PowerPoint slide. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do it in SPSS. I'm not gonna show you how to do it in R, and there's a reason for that. I'm not just being lazy. Um, <laughs> The note on R before we get started here is that uh, if you run an ANCOVA as a multiple regression, so in this case your, your independent variable uh, is um, therapy type and your covariate is IQ score. Um, if you just uh, run those two as independent variables, the two is let's say two independent variables as part of a multiple regression to predict the DV in R with the same code that you would have used if it was a multiple regression or a two independent variable regression, you'll get the same answer. You'll get the same result. Um, so just go back to the multiple regression R video uh, for that. Enter in the data like, like so, and you should be able to get what we're about to get in SPSS. SPSS gives you either option. You can run this as a multiple regression, or you can run this as an ANCOVA. And the ANCOVA, I mean, so why are we even doing this? <laughs> ANCOVA sometimes fits the theory a little better. Sometimes you have multiple covariates. Um, and COVA theory is like, hey, I have one primary independent variable and I'm bringing in a covariate to control for that covariate. Multiple regression, sometimes it's a little bit different. You're bringing in multiple independent variables and treating them the same as each other. So the theory is a little bit different. But uh, once you get to the math, the statistics, it often ends up exactly the same. So here we are uh, in SPSS doing something slightly different than multiple regression to get you the same result that you could have gotten by just doing multiple regression. So anyway, okay, so we've got uh, three columns of data here for this example. The independent variable therapy, I just coded as one and two. 
One was talking to mom. Two is uh, eating chocolate. Satisfaction is your dependent variable. IQ score is the covariate. You've got eight people in total, so I've organized it like a um, like I would a two-way ANOVA, uh, uh, like I would a one-way ANOVA um, with, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I think I'm just going to keep filming, not cut that out. <clears throat> Sometimes I cough. Uh, all right. Um, so I, this is set up just like I would have for a one-way ANOVA with the independent variable here in the first column. It's just that I added in the covariate here at the end. And so let's do this. All right. So we're going to go to Analyze. And then we're going to go to General Linear Model Univariate. Same place you would go to do a one-way ANOVA in this case. Um, I've already done this, so I've moved these over. So you're, let me move them back just to, to show you what it would look like initially. It would look like this initially with the uh, variables on the, on the left side here. Um, and so you just got to place them in the right uh, order. So a dependent variable in this case is satisfaction. Therapy goes into fixed factor as your IV. And then IQ score goes down here. There's a, there's a specified slot for a covariant. You could enter it in as a fixed factor here, but then it would give you an interaction term and stuff. It would think you're doing a two-way ANOVA, and that's not what you want. You want to treat it as a covariant. So it's going to go down here. You can do some other things with plots and such, but I'm just going to click OK. We're going to look at the output. Uh, so, uh, I mean, relatively straightforward here. One uh, chart with most of your, all of your uh, key statistics. Tests of between subjects effects. So first of all, you look at the independent variable, therapy type, uh, F 0.157, very small significance, or p-value 0.708. So we have no effect or no significant effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable while controlling for IQ or the covariate uh, in this case. And I didn't run this without the covariate. That's the other piece here sometimes. You want to run the ANOVA first. You can do that. You probably remember how to do that. If you don't, you can go back to the ANOVA video. You would just take out the covariate in this case. Do what we just did. Don't add in the covariate. And you can compare the before and after. Um, in this case, you're going to get what we got in the, in the slides just a minute ago. No significant effect. Now we're controlling for the covariate, still no significant effect. So the numbers aren't really very interesting here for this example, but they are getting us from point A to point B, showing you the process. The other thing here to check out, which is kind of supplemental, it's not the, the, usually the primary focus, but you can also look at the covariate's direct effect on the dependent variable. That is IQ score is like IQ score having an effect. Is there a relationship between IQ and satisfaction in the therapy sessions? Um, which you could also, like if this was a multiple regression, that might be more of a focus. That effect might be more part, part of your set of core hypotheses. In this case, since it's ANCOVA, yeah, it's just supplemental. Here we're seeing a, a IQ score is not having a significant effect, point, uh, p value 0 0.506. So IQ score and satisfaction are unrelated as well. And that's it. That's pretty much all you need uh, for ANCOVA from SPSS.